So I got a really nice gift for Christmas from my family. It's a table saw for my workshop and I love it. Now I'm a little bit tall, I'm six foot three and this is a little bit low. And also I'd like an outfeed table. An outfeed table supports the material after you cut it. So if you're cutting it like this without an outfeed table, it'll just fall right off and sometimes can split the wood. So rather than build a specific outfeed table for this, I thought I could just use my bench. And this is the height I like to work at anyway. So I'm going to show you how I 3D printed some custom blocks to lift this up to the proper height and give me better positioning and an outfeed table. And I'll show you that on today's Filament Friday. So I started by just tracing a line on a piece of paper that I slid underneath it. And that gave me the size that I wanted. And then I marked where I wanted the hole. So now once I had that, I could go and scan that in and turn it into a 3D print. Now I scanned in the design and then I modified it to make it darker. And then I made it transparent. So it ended up being a PNG file. And then from there, I went to an online PNG to SVG converter. I used a thousand dots per inch and I just did monochrome and I converted it and it gave me a file. So then I opened Tinkercad, which was my favorite software to convert 2D into 3D, and I imported it in using their import feature. But then I resized it to the exact dimensions that I needed because even though I scanned it in, it doesn't mean it scans in one to one. So after I set the proper dimensions, then I brought in a cylinder to make the hole. S size that properly and then put the ruler at the corner so I could position the hole exactly where it needed to be. And then I made that into a hole and made it really tall because this whole block needed to be enlarged to 70 millimeters tall. Now once I did that, I centered the hole to the block using the align tool and then I had my hole. Now I printed one just like this to start, but then later I realized I needed a locator triangle so this thing wouldn't pivot on the base. So that was something I added later. And here I'm adding it. Um, all I did was move the work plane to the top of the block, brought in the triangle, sized it to the way I needed it, then I centered it to the block, made it the proper height because this is too tall here, 20 millimeters is too tall. And it's actually going into the lower block, so I know I'm going to get good conversion. And then I took this whole thing, combined it into one solid unit, and I just needed to export it as a .stl file. And from there, I needed to load it into my software for my DaVinci Junior. So I opened XYZWare, made sure I selected DaVinci Junior, and then I went and found the file. It was the SawFoot 1 in this case, .stl. Loaded it in, positioned it the way I wanted it, and then I sliced it at a 20% fill, 0.4 layer height, and a fast speed. And then started the slicing, and a minute 20 later, it was ready to go. Everything matched up. It said 3 hours and 31 minutes and 34 meters of plastic. Now I didn't do a time-lapse print on this because it's a pretty boring print. But all I did was copy the file to the SD card, pop it into DaVinci Junior, and then print from SD card. I love that feature about this printer. Now this is the first one I did, so it didn't have the triangular locator on top. But the quality of this was really good. So I was going to print them all on this machine. But I ran out of plastic. And I have to use their plastic. So I printed one more in here, and then the rest I had to print on my reflashed Repetier 1.0A machine. So now I've got all four 3D printed. Three of them were printed on my Reflash DaVinci 1.0A, and then one of them was printed on my DaVinci Junior. Now, the DaVinci Junior prints are actually a little better than the 1.0A in some respects. There's no splitting on them, and it seems very solid. There's more of a smooth finish, though, on the ABS prints off the DaVinci 1.0A. The one difference is I printed with a raft on the 1.0A, so I have to clean the bottom up and I'm going to use this tool that I've shown in previous videos. I actually have a link to it in the description below that you can buy it from my website to support the channel. But it's a finishing tool and it's very, very handy for this type of work. So now the hole is blocked to the bottom because of the raft and it's got this lip all the way around it. We just take the finishing tool and just drag it along and it just cuts that off, carves it right off. 
and you can go all the way around because it pivots the end of this pivots you can go right around curved edges cut it right off and it's not too sharp that it cuts your fingers so you can actually cut towards yourself which you wouldn't want to do with an exacto knife so I really find this indispensable in my 3d print shop now what's also nice is cutting out the hole now I know where the hole is so now I can just take this push it in and then just pivot it round and round like that and because this thing pivots it just cuts that hole right out and it gives me a nice round edge so the design has this triangular lip on it and that helps locate it on the base so it can't turn and then the, so I gotta make sure that's down and then this comes up to the bottom of the saw now originally it had these short little carriage bolts so I just went to the hardware store and got the same size bolt but longer so that'll go in there and then slide right through the hole and so now I can bolt this down to the base so now I'll just use my cordless impact driver get these nice and tight at each corner so now everything's bolted in place and this thing is solid and it's right at that right height right about at my belt height right where I want it so now the question does it fit the workbench and it's perfect the miter gauge that you use for cutting different angles and stuff slides right over the bench so it's, it gives it just enough clearance so as I'm cutting I don't have to worry about this thing hitting the bench so that's perfect and then it does support the wood because as I'm cutting against this thing it supports it so I think it's gonna work out perfect so there's another problem solved with 3d printing if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you like what I'm doing and you want to see more. And if you want to support the channel, the dollar to my Patreon account to the link up here goes a long way. So that's it for now. I'll see you on the next Filament Friday.